Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Brad over here at Chattanooga Fishing Fun. Here at Fishing Fun, we sell Ranger boats and Lance truck campers. It's been about a week or two since I've done a video, so I figured I need to hop back on here and get to it. I've uh, just been busy getting this one ready. I've never showed a Lance 2285 camper on this channel before, so I figured I needed to go ahead and do that while I have it. I only have another, I think, two hours with it until it goes to its new home, but I wanted to go ahead and showcase it since I've never showed one. So like I said, this is a 2024 Lance 2285. This is Lance's only rear kitchen travel trailer model. So this one here, you should be able to pull with a half ton. It comes in weighing at 5,864 pounds dry. You know, you go loading it up with all your gear, your, your clothes, loading up the closets, loading up the kitchen and uh you know all your storage compartments are going to be more than that obviously but uh it starts out at 5864 pounds dry with all the optional equipment over here with that dry weight it's not your usual 10 percent for the hitch it is 785 pounds dry hitch weight you go and add propane and all that good stuff to the front here of course you're going to be over that but uh 785 pounds gives you a roundabout idea for dry hitch weight now we're going to go ahead and uh, go over price as well so this one starts out at eighty five thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars with the factory equipment and destination charge brings you to a grand total of ninety two thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and seventy five cents so I'll just go ahead and throw it out there what we sold it at since you're here watching and this one's already sold. It sold around 66, in between 66 and 67. I don't remember the exact change, but this one sold around the $66,000 range. All right, so uh, we'll, go, we'll come back to the outside, go around the outside uh, last. We're gonna do the inside first. Okay, so walking in, like I was saying earlier, this is Lance's only rear kitchen travel trailer model get you a better view of that back up here even with a wide angle lens i can't hardly get it all in the camera here all right so off to the left you're going to see that we have the six cubic foot fridge it is a separated fridge and freezer combo it is a two-way runs off of gas and ac plenty of room in there for all your meats and beverages of your choice Got our little freezer here and my frozen bottle of water just to make sure it works. Above, this is where you're going to run this side slide in and out where it says in and out. Then we have our solar panel monitor. You may be asking where the microwave is. Well, they like to keep everything nice and hidden so you don't see it. A little standard size microwave. One thing I think they do need to work on is how far up these go. See? Hits the roof. Need to put that shelf back up. But you have a lot of uh, space here for pots and pans, towels, all that good stuff. Got a little bit more room back there to the left. Down here, you're going to have your three burner stove top. That folds back nice and neat. Then you have this easily removable griddle so you can clean underneath there, which this one needs. Then we have our oven. Plenty of room for like a DiGiorno pizza or something like that. It is a self-igniting oven. You got this switch and you don't have to hold a lighter back in there anymore. Above you have a little bit of countertop space. Uh, some, some of the uh, chefs may not, you know, have enough space for all their prep, but you do have this table over here to the right. And then if you're like me, you're cooking outside anyway. So my current camper actually has the camper or the uh, kitchen outside. It's the Lance Enduro camper. That's how I prefer to do it anyway. So I'm not stinking up the inside of the camper. You got a single dish sink. Makes for easy clean. And then if you need more space, like I was just saying, you got these flush sink covers that sit down in it and gives you more countertop space. Might be wondering what this is here in the back. 
That is your garbage can. Pretty neat, huh? Easy to get to. Then you have a nice covering for it also. Uh, let's see, you got you an AC outlet here for your crock pot, Instapot, Keurig. Then you have two little cabinets down here. Plenty of space for a bunch of Doritos and extra beer. Some pull out drawers, I thought these were really neat. Helps you stay organized. And then this uh, shelf is also removable so you can totally take it out or you can uh, put it down one as well. All of your windows are gonna have these day and night shades. You got your day shade and night shade. Like I said, that's going to be on every single window. Everywhere you see a window, it's going to have those day and night shades. Also, look at our window here. Look how usable these are. These open up more than me after having a couple drinks. Let's in a lot more sunlight, natural airflow. On a day like today, when it's about 70 degrees, you just open up the windows. Don't even need the air conditioner. But uh, moving on to the dinette here. This is what you call the Grayson interior. Got the Grayson interior here on the uh, dinette and the couch. So in 2024, you have three models to choose from. You got Bronzite, Grayson, and Lapis. Like I said, this one's gonna be the Grayson. When you're moving on to like Lapis or Bronzite, you're really not doing a whole lot. You're changing the color of the trim. So on the Bronzite, where you see gray on the trim here is going to be brown and lapis is going to be like a royal or midnight blue the interior color here is going to stay the same the walls the trim on the walls the cabinetry the countertops that's all staying the exact same all you're doing is changing the trim color here down through here and your couch would be either blue or brown if you went with bronzite or lapis so that's that's the differences you're going to notice uh, model to model and different color schemes this uh, dinette also makes into a bed it makes into a 54 by 78 inch bed and I would be more than happy to fold this down for you so you can see that okay like I said this makes into a bed it is 54 by what was it 78 inches yeah that's right so what you do is you remove this pedestal here <laughs> Put it underneath there, take the table, slide it on these little rails built in, nice and conveniently. Then you take the backing cushions here, both of them, stuff them in the middle. You can leave that cushion along the back wall, but that little cushion that you sit on on the back of the U-shaped dinette, I also stuffed under here out of the way. So everything stays nice and neat out of the way, so you don't have to worry about you know finding extra places to um, put the extras here. These drawers, you have two storage drawers. When you go to open these, all you do to unlock it is press that little button there, and then you pull on it. I have a lot of people that come in here pulling on this, yanking really hard, wondering why it's not opening. You just do that and pull, and same to lock it. You do that, and it's locked. So if something's not opening, there's no need to pull harder. It means you're doing something wrong. But like I said, two pull-out drawers under there gives you extra storage space. And then let's go ahead and make this into a bed. The couch does make into a bed. It's kind of like a little futon style. I didn't have enough time to actually take a measurement of this as this is going out pretty soon. And there wasn't anything on the website telling me, you know, how big this is. But uh, underneath the couch, you have a little bit of storage space. But this is where you're going to find your water pump and one of your bypass valves right here on the side so for winterizing you have one here the uh, clear pickup tube for the antifreeze and then your other one is going to be underneath the sink it is a pain in the hiney to get to the only camper that i've actually had to remove an access panel to uh, get to it all the other ones i can maneuver around the access panel but this one it took an extra five minutes because I had to go find a screwdriver and remove that panel. But 
you know, it's still easy. Above the couch here, we've got uh, actually a lot of storage space. You can put some duffel bags up here. Um, you know, whatever you actually want to carry up there. A little, I don't know, cooktop for outside. One of them little two burner Magellans or Coleman's or something. But I do think that this is something that Lance needs to work on. Limiting out to where it only goes to here and not all the way to the ceiling. All right, so moving on. Probably need to make that back into the dinette, but we'll get to that in a minute. We've got our 40 inch Jensen TV. It's a smart TV, so you can have all your apps like Netflix and Hulu and Paramount Plus and all that fun stuff. Got our JBL speaker system here with the subwoofer down at the bottom. You can turn the sub on and off with uh, the remote. You can, you know, minimize the sound level of it or maximize. I mean, you can get this thing banging in here and bumping for all your fellow campers. Got a couple 110 outlets underneath, cable, uh, HDMI plugins, DC outlet with USB plugins also. Then underneath we have a little bit of shelf space. Reckon you could stuff some DVDs and all that fun stuff in here. Well, I don't know. They don't have a DVD player. You can find something to do with that. Moving on, you have a curtain here to separate the back of the camper to create some privacy. We have our bathroom. This is what you would call a dry bath. Dry bath means that you're not showering with the toilet. So this one here, you have your, what do they call this, a porcelain. You got a porcelain toilet. Some little integrated storage slots here in the wall. This is pretty brilliant. I like that. Utilizing all the space. Mm, stuff your shampoo and all your other bathroom products in there. Some more storage. And same over here. And then here is the shower. Probably want to see how much room you have in there, so I will hop on in. Look at that. This nice little skylight cutout gives me enough room for my head. I would have to duck a little bit to utilize the shower, even with this all the way up. So, a little ducking, get a little leg workout with it. Of course, I've got about an inch worth of shoes on too, so that might drop me down in in there but uh yeah you're you'll always be the first to know if it's raining outside and then this one has the built-in shower miser also so while you're waiting on the water to heat up you turn this in the up position that's going to recycle the water until it heats up and then you turn it back down to utilize it oh yeah another little storage spot then the towel rack and the toilet paper holster right in front of you how convenient all right so it is dark in here let's uh turn on a light there we go okay so here is one of your closets it is a really sizable closet i could definitely get in this thing so it would store a body per se hello Got you a little medicine cabinet behind the mirror. This is where you wash your hands. If you noticed, there's no sink in here to maximize the amount of space. And your sink is out here. So, a little simple walk across and you got yourself a sink and a little kick out. Plenty of storage in this camper. Okay, so fold that back in if you'll notice this one has two there we go two doors so this one here this allows you to access the camper with the slide out in or access the bathroom with the slide out in uh, with that rear slide in I could not get past it well, I guess you could if you hopped across the couch and everything but there's no need to do that since you have another door um, but I could not access it through here with the slide all the way in. 
So that's where having this front door comes in handy. You don't have to run the slide out to get access to the bathroom if you're on say the highway or something and uh, just wanna simply pull over to use the bathroom. All right, so here is our, I guess you could call it the master. So you have another curtain here for more privacy. Uh, you have a queen size mattress and lo and behold, more storage. This thing is full of storage. You have it everywhere. That's why I was saying that 58 and change dry weight is dry weight. Once you find a way to possibly utilize all the storage in this thing, you're not gonna be anywhere close to 5,800. Here's another closet. Bunch of space, bunch of room, and same over here. Handy dandy. The front window does kick out. I get a lot of questions about that, but yes, it does raise out and you have the same day and night shades on that as you do all the other windows. Countertop space over here for uh, books, phone charging, CPAP machines, all that fun stuff. And you have 110 outlets over here for the CPAPs and phone charging and D DC outlet, USBs, and same on the other side. So you don't have to run cords behind each other's heads over here to be able to charge your phone or run any AC or DC appliances couple pull out drawers here on the side and a couple remotes this one is for the bedroom and then you have a separate one for the I don't know you call that a living room maybe uh, the the living space you have a separate remote for that well 19 inch TV back here um, this one was optional the I think it was I think that was the optional TV Oh, oh, it's a 24 inch. Okay. It didn't look that big. Okay, so the 24 inch TV is an option for the bedroom. You don't have to get it. So that would be a way to save, I don't know, maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars. Got a max air fan here on the top. It is uh got the auto uh, rain sensing built into it. So if it's raining outside, it will shut itself. Got some reading lamps up here and a little bit of shelf space on top and as you notice all the ac work is ducted there's uh, one here one in the bathroom right there and i believe two up here one there and one there so that that's pretty much it on the inside i did want to tell you the height in here it's 80 inches so me i have plenty of room in here walking around there's nowhere where my head is actually going to hit anywhere except coming out the door right there it would get me so a little bit of a duck underneath the door you're good uh after after you know a few times walking out it'll be like clockwork you won't even recognize your ducking but uh yeah that's the inside let's go check out the outside okay, so starting at the front the acrylic double pane tinted window we went over that that does kick out just like all the other ones you have this Pretty cool aggressive looking lighting here on the front. It's controlled on the inside compartment over here that we're about to get to. Uh, but that would, you know, give you lighting if you're swapping out propane tanks at night or hooking up to the truck or disconnecting from the truck, um, all that fun stuff. You have the smart jack here on the front. It does have that memory deal where uh, it'll auto set hitch height and all that fun stuff. These have a two and five sixteenths hitch. So that's what you'll need uh ball wise as far as hooking up to this thing this has three 20 pound propane tanks underneath the hood here carry a quarter in your pocket you'll be able to get this uh, doohickey here off off of uh the covering that way you can access the propane tanks and then for easy removal they have these latches here on the side you just pick it up and take it off and then simply latch back down here you may be asking what this is. Lance was thinking of your uh, fur babies when they built this camper. This is where you attach the dog lead. My camper's got it and it actually works. It retains a 120 pound Great Dane to it. Um, she hasn't taken off and like attacked a squirrel or anything like that. So I don't know 
how aggressive the dog can get with this but I'm sure I'll find out here sooner or later. So walking down the side, this camper calls for two batteries. So that's what we have in it. They are on slides. This is a uh, 27 series deep cycle DECA Marine battery that we install in them. You can do AGMs, you can do lithiums. Uh, the charging system is compatible with all. Uh, so uh, lithiums, you know, anybody that knows about those knows that they're a little bit of an expensive upgrade and not everybody needs them especially if you're staying in the campground a little portable table here very neat and convenient to have my camper does not have that so i'm a little jealous about that you have an extra little plug in here for the side solar if you wanted to carry one with you this right here is where you extend your jacks up and down the stabilizers you have interior lighting and this is the switch i was telling you about that controls the front lights like i said those look pretty aggressive to me i like it here's my keys and this right here is on a roller it makes everything super easy to get to so you don't have to go army crawling back through your, the front of your camper to get to anything here is our electric stabilizers there is our spare tire and the mechanism to bring it down little external propane connection as well for your external grills. Huge side awning here. Uh, I forget how many feet that is. It may tell me here on the side. Let's see. You know what? Instead of keeping you waiting, I'll just go ahead and tell you about the awning. It's a, it's a big awning. The arms come out uh, kind of scissor style. They don't come down. So there's nothing to whack your head on when walking underneath this awning and it is auto wind sensing so if it gets too windy outside and you leave the power on to the awning it will roll itself back in to help prevent a campground disaster you also have a nice led strip at the end of the awning instead of at the beginning the advantage to that is it is movable you can set it to where you want it like me if i'm fishing towards the lake i had a uh, camper with a rear uh, power awning and I would maneuver the light to where it was pointed outwards where I could see the white tip on my fishing rod To see if I was getting bit so a little bit of personal experience there uh, for that Okay, as you see different style step for the front still good step. That's the torque lift glow steps there in the back um, For some reason Lance wants to make it insanely difficult to get to your low water drains if you can see them there in the back behind the tire i don't know why they do that that's a pain to get to i'm gonna get the keys show you what this is here i think yeah okay so this you see this little thing here this is a mount where you can mount an external tv then you have 110 outlets or a DC outlet, depending on if you have AC or DC television to put out here. USB connectors and all that fun stuff. Cable. Lock that back up. And then on this side, you're actually going to have two external hand warmers. This is what I call them. This is where your furnace kicks out. So you stick your hand down here. You're getting your hands nice and heated on a cool day. External port for uh, your portable JBL speaker that comes with this thing. It is a uh, Bluetooth so you can hook your phone right up to it and play music and jam out with the neighbors or annoy them. Depends what type of people you're camping next to. This right here is where you fill your, I think it's a 45 gallon. It is a 45 gallon. Your 45 gallon fresh water tank is filled right here. Just use a garden hose, pop that cap off, plug it in, let it run. It'll come out the burp tube here when it's full. For uh, axle and or uh, tires, we got the Goodyear Endurance tires. We have leaf springs and shock absorbers added to this one. You can load up to 80 pounds of pressure in those tires. Okay, so four season certified, that's what we are. 
This one right here is rated for all seasons. What it has is the heated underbelly or insulated underbelly is another way of describing it. But uh, with that encapsulated underbelly, it's gonna entrap all the heat. So that's how they get them four season rated. As long as you have the furnace going, you're gonna be supplying heat to all your holding tanks and water lines and all that great stuff, all that important stuff. We are certified green, go earth. Here is your second hand warmer. So if your hubby's, you know, hogging the other one, you can come over here, heat your hands on this one. And like I said, this one is sold, but I can always get another. Okay, so we have made it to the back here. The first two vents here are for the refrigerator. Nothing really important there to see in a walkthrough. Uh, this, where it says squeeze, you squeeze that in. You got your sewer uh, hose holder. Nice, conveniently stored right there in the bumper. We have our utility hitch here on the back. I want to say that these are rated for about 300 pounds. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yep, right there. 300 pounds. Don't exceed it. Probably don't want to get close to it. I'd say about 250 and you're fine. Uh, but these are rated for, uh, for, you know, like bike racks or extra storage racks. Look how far that thing goes out. That is nice. Okay. So, these are equipped with all new Truma appliances. You have the Truma Aqua Go, which is the tankless water heater on demand. It only runs on gas, no AC, but it's very efficient. Been running this thing on gas, shoot, and the fridge and everything else for about four days right now and haven't gone through a single tank. Impressive. And they're super easy to winterize. I'll need to do a separate video on that. We got the uh, Lance Fat Ladder back here, rated for 250 pounds. It says right there. And then we also have the nice backup camera so you can see what's going on behind you. All your campground connections are gonna be on this side. So that includes your 30 amp plug-in, which we are utilizing right now. Our park and satellite connections, city water connection, external shower for everybody that likes to give their fellow campers a show uh, there is one drain tank back here this is going to be for your fresh water that drains out the the middle there this right here is gray tank number two it is in right now you have a total of two gray tanks on this thing the sink is run to one of them uh, the sink is actually run to gray tank two and then the shower is run to uh, gray tank one. So this one's going to be your main dump right here. This is for the body waste and the shower waste. Um, the black tank on this one is also 40 gallons, as you can see there. And the black tank is run to the toilet and the sink in the bedroom from what I discovered. Okay, so in your massive dinette slide here, I had to skip over this real quick. You have this good size external storage. Look at how big that is. Okay, moving on. This right here is where you hook your black water uh, hose if you wanted to flush the tank. Always have that open when you do that. And down here, we have our little lock box. And here we go. This is not a dry box. As you can see, it has drains in the back. So you would want to keep some stuff in there that you don't mind getting wet. And we have the toy lock for all the thieves that like to get the five finger discounts. This will help deter them from taking your kayaks or bikes or whatever you want to hook up to that. You may be wondering what this is. Well, I'll give you a hint. This is a ventilated compartment and you have straps in there. So what do we have here? This is the portable generator compartment. I actually took a measurement of this. I would like to tell you, uh, let's see. So the opening here, 25 inches, 16 inches, and 19 inches deep. It doesn't matter what it is here to here, because here to here is bigger than here to here. So um, 25 up and down, 16 side to side, 
nine, 10 inches to the wall there from here. So hopefully somebody needed to know that because I actually took the time to measure that. Uh, you got your main battery disconnect switch back in the back there towards the top. And then here's all of our information on the camper trailer. Here's our other slide or uh, <laughs> other battery compartment. There we go. Okay, well, that is it for the outside. And now let's go check out the roof. Looks like we have a new material for 2024 on the roof here. It's like a one piece roll on PVC roof. Don't step on that. Up here on the roof, it is fully walk on. I'm 200 pounds and there are no soft spots up here. My brother just cleaned the roof of this thing for me yesterday and I did the outside, so. We need to get it cleaned up for the customer. This is a 190 watt solar panel, helps trickle charge the batteries. And I'll just kind of walk around up here, show you what's up here and show you that it is fully walk on. Here's our max air fan, made it super easy on you on installing that, uh, let's see what's it called, max air fan two. It's the one that's rated for power ventilation. Got a little bit of caulking over it, but nice to see that they're overdoing it slide out topper so you don't have to come up here and sweep off the top of the slide every time you roll it in and the truma venta air ac unit that's a 15k unit and has the dehumidifier built into it okay okay everybody that kind of completes the video i don't really know what else to show you i hope that that answered some people's questions and some people found it informative if you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Let's YouTube know that I might know what I'm talking about. Might be enjoyable to watch. So they might recommend me a little bit more and uh, reach some more faces. Uh, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the, hit the subscribe button. Join this Fish and Fun family. I believe we're close to 28,000 subscribers now. So that is amazing, everybody. Thank you very much. And thank you for continuing to watch. If you have any questions, you can call me at 423-892-6272. That'll be in the description below in case I said it too fast. Um, my email will be down there, but if you are interested in a camper, I'd love to hook you up with one. It won't take but five minutes on the phone, promise you. I'm not gonna to try to waste your time. I want you to buy what you want. If you don't wanna buy anything, that's fine. If you just wanna talk, I do that a lot too. So um, it's part of the gig here. But uh, like I said, this camper was the 2024 Lance 2285. It's Lance's only rear kitchen travel trailer model. Comes in weighing at 5,864 pounds dry and 785 pounds dry on the hitch. Like I said, dry. So when you go and load this thing full of water, propane full, full of gear, closets full, all that fun stuff, you're gonna be over that. So. Kind of kind of take that into consideration when you're hunting a truck if you don't already have one to pair with this camper uh, also this camper uh, started out at eighty five thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars after factory options and destination charge brings you to a total msrp of ninety two thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and seventy five cents call in for the bsrp pricing that's brad's suggested retail pricing it's a lot better than what I just told you. And like I said at the beginning of this, this video, this one sold between $66,000 and $67,000. So I just don't remember the exact change. But it was between, you know, that and that. So that was a lot of money off. I saved this customer a ton of money. So give me a call. My name's Brad. I'm over here at Chattanooga Fish and Fun. Again, that's 423-892-6272. I hope you all have a lovely day. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.